In this video, we're going to talk about the most effective ways to score highly in section three of the BMAT. Welcome back to the channel. As you may have seen, I've been doing a BMAT series where we're taking each section and giving you the highest yield tips for each part. If you wanna check out the full playlist, you can do so there along with some other good tips and resources. So today we're gonna to look at a few things, starting with the basics that you need to know about section three of the BMAT, then how to best structure your answers, and I'll divide it into three sections, which I'll talk about in turn. Then we're going to look at how to divide up the word count and then finally the highest yield tips to score highly. So let's start with the basics. When you get to section three, you're going to have three questions to choose from. You have to choose only one of those and you're going to get 30 minutes to answer that. As you know, this year for the first time, the BMAT is going to be on a computer. And in this case, you actually have a word limit of 550 words, which kind of is gonna work nicely for you as you can typically type quicker than you can write. It usually helps to start by making a plan, but as you're going to be doing it on a word processor, you can probably edit things and move things up and down a lot more easily than you could if you were writing them. So let's take a moment to look at how it works. So each question is going to have either a quote or a statement, and then they're basically going to ask you a variant of doing three things. The first thing they'll ask you to do is explain the statement or quote. Then the second thing they'll ask is for you to make an objective argument. That typically means that they want you to argue the other side, so make a statement against what is said in the passage. The third thing they're going to ask you to do is make a subjective argument. So they want to know really to what extent do you agree with the statement or quote presented. And here this is not so much about having strong opinions, but more how you explain them. So now that we've highlighted the three main points, we're going to take them in turn and look at each of them in depth. But before we do that, just remember that the marks are allocated partly for the creativity or quality of content that you use, and secondly, for the quality of written English, so how well and eloquently you present your ideas. So this is best summarized by a quote that's on the BMAT website that says the following. This section tests your ability to select, develop, and organize ideas and communicate them in writing in a concise and effective way. So let's look at some typical examples from past papers. So on the screen now, you've got three previous questions. So one is, a little learning is a dangerous thing by Alexander Pope. The second is, our belief in any particular natural law cannot have a safer basis than our unsuccessful critical attempts to refute it by Karl Popper. And then finally, number three is, it is ridiculous to treat the living body as a mechanism. And you can see the questions that follow on are typically a variant of a theme. They firstly ask you to explain it, ask you to argue against it roughly, and all are pretty much the same way of saying to what extent do you agree with this. So let's look at how we would tackle this. So we'll go through those three points in turn. So when we explain it, we want to do the following. We first want to single out the key terms. Then we want to define them. We then want to give some context. And then finally, we want to explain it in one or two sentences. Here, essentially, we are kind of giving the for argument. We're explaining what it is and the rationale behind the statement or the quote in this case. A really good acronym that I'm going to reiterate at all parts of this section three is the term PEEL. And that's really gonna help you make some points. PEEL stands for point, evidence, explain, and then always link it back to the original statement. So for example, an explanation from one of the questions that we showed, let's talk about Karl Popper, because I'm actually reading one of his books at the moment, Conjectures and Refutations, which is fantastic and really, really interesting. So he says, our belief in any particular natural law cannot have a safer basis than our unsuccessful critical attempts to refute it. What Popper is essentially saying here is that we cannot prove any natural laws, but only disprove them. We could follow it up by explaining, it is impossible for us to fully understand the laws of nature, but all we can do is understand what it is not by therefore refuting it. And therefore we can only assume a safe basis for natural law by making beliefs that we cannot refute. And also within that, we'd probably want to define our key terms. So here they are maybe belief, natural law, what we define as a safe basis and refutation probably. Or if we were looking at the first one where we see Alexander Pope saying a little learning is a dangerous thing, we can explain how what he's saying is that kind of only half knowing something is sometimes times more harmful than actually understanding something in depth and realizing the limitations of our knowledge. We could maybe explain something about the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is the thing where at first we feel like we know a lot about it, but actually as we learn more, we realize that we know a lot less about a wide subject and we kind of get the appreciation for how nuanced it is. And then only after we kind of understand even more, then we start increasing our knowledge again. So let's move on to the second part now, which is the objective argument. So as we said here, we're usually making an argument in opposition to the statement or quote. But it's important that before we start making our argument against, that we truly understand what the quote or statement is actually inferring. So that's gonna come from a really tight explanation to start, and then making sure that we've actually really read it carefully and understood what it's about before we start making the count 
counter arguments. Again, here we should be using the PEEL acronym to structure our points, making sure that we use two to three examples to really back up our arguments. And here the style of writing is really going to help. I've made a complete different video on kind of writing in good quality English and making sure that you do it in a way that's succinct and kind of is gonna get you maximum marks. So check out that video here. Other than that, what I would say is that it's all about how we signpost and separate our arguments to make sure that we're being clear and concise. Using sentences like, it is evident that, or the quotation suggests that so-and-so. And then finally, you're on to the last part, which is to make your subjective argument. So remember that we're essentially answering the question, to what extent do you agree with this? So remember for this, there are no right or wrong opinions. As long as you are explaining them and backing them up with sound logic and arguments, it doesn't really matter which side of the fence you lie on as long as you are explaining yourself clearly. So really you want to illustrate how you got to that opinion. At this stage, it's really important to make the person reading aware that you understand that there are scales to the argument. It's not black or white, that you can kind of be all the way at a 10 or a minus 10, and you can be somewhere in the middle and kind of understand that you appreciate there are shades of gray and illustrate and kind of explain where you lie on that scale. And again, just remember, illustrate your points using the peel structure and you won't go too far wrong. So now that we've broken this section down into threes, you're probably wondering how we should distribute the word count. So I'm gonna to explain to you now roughly how I would recommend that you do it. So for a total of 550 words, I would recommend that you spend about 10%, so 50 words on the explanation, and then 45% on the objective argument, 45% on the subjective argument. So that's 250 on each of those last two parts. So now let's talk about my most important tips for scoring highly. As always, we always say, read the question carefully, but because of the kind of semi-abstract or ethereal nature of some of the quotes or statements that are made, it's really important that you understand kind of what is trying to be conveyed in those quotes and what they're trying to get across. So make sure you take a moment to really reflect on it and understand it before you start writing. One of the most important things for scoring highly is to make sure you fully justify any points that you want to make. So any arguments that you make, just make sure that you are backing them up with a really good explanation. My next tip is that even though it is on a computer Computer, I still think that you should take the time to make a quick plan just to kind of give your subjective arguments, your objective arguments, and you can kind of, as you're going along, just keep adding to it if something comes to your head or something that you wanna talk about. Another tip is to make sure that you explain things clearly. Let's say the subject is saying that the NHS is in a difficult position right now. Explain why it's in a difficult position. So explain that it is in a lot of debt or it's having difficulty with staffing issues. Be very specific and rational into the explanations as to why you're making the points you're making. And then some stylistic points for scoring well, I would recommend that you use pronouns like theirs instead of his and hers. Use short, punchy sentences to make your points clear and concise. And then the same as I say in those videos I recommended earlier about writing a good personal statement. When you write it out, if you sound it out as you say it, so kind of imagine yourself saying it out loud, that will help understand whether the sentences are too long and just promotes good fluency. So if you'd like some more help with the BMAT, I've done a full playlist to make sure that you score highly on all the sections here. Otherwise, if you want to get the best resource for scoring highly in the BMAT, I recommend that you check out this video here.